Mike Wilbon, Tim Tebow is engaged, Tony. Do you remember popping the question? And Tony Kornheiser, of course, I got down on one knee, looked up into her eyes, and Rihanna said, who are you? That's, that's, and, and then she called for security. Yeah, I was going to say, security yeah. would be the next one. Yeah. If, if I showed you 15 pictures, and Rihanna was one of them, the other 14 were just like people in the, in the public eye. Yeah. Would you know for certain which one was Rihanna? Yes, especially if you showed me pictures, for example, of the Cleveland Indians. Okay, yeah, I you would know, think you know, that's Rihanna. less hard. I would know that. Less difficult. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, Nick Foles may break the bank, Kyler Murray appears headed for the NFL, and Steve Young joins us to talk about this weekend's playoff games. But we begin today with yet another young quarterback whisperer getting one of the vacant head coaching jobs in the NFL. A couple of weeks ago, the Miami Dolphins fired Adam Gase after three years and 23 and 25. Today, it is being reported the New York Jets are set to sign him. So Gase goes from AFC East to AFC East. Wilbon, did Gase earn a second gig so soon? I'm going to get there. In the meantime, wake me when the run on experienced, qualified black coaching candidates starts. Let me know I, when I that, will. Let me know when that run will, begins. I've got an right? alarm set for that, yeah. so I'll let you yeah, know. Yeah, we both may be yeah. Rip Van Winkle before they get to that run. Um, not particularly. No. Adam Gaze didn't do anything in Miami that screamed out, you got to have him. I mean, he didn't, do, he didn't replace Don Shula yeah. in anybody's hearts in South Florida or even Jimmy Johnson's. So, you know, no, 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 no. I heard this and I just went, really? We have gone back in time to a very lazy time in NFL hiring where owners and executives in the NFL front offices seem scurred and they would just rather reach out to anybody yeah. other than act with some sort of boldness and intellect and depth and come up with new, fresh, exciting candidates. They're lazy. So I looked at this one. I've looked at all the coaching hires, and I'm okay so far to this point with all the coaching hires. Matt LaFleur might be a little bit of a stretch. Kingsbury? Kingsbury may be a little bit of a stretch, a but he has been stretch. affiliated with some very talented okay. young quarterbacks. Okay. This guy I don't get. I don't get this. He was 6-10 and 10 last year. He started out 3-0 and 0 this year, closed 4-9, and nine, and one of those four was on that miracle situation against New England that just never Can't happened. You know, that's not him. Right. He had nothing to do with that. No. So the only thing I could think of is that the head-to-head -head with the Jets for three years, he's 5-1. and one, But, Mike, he's 13-7 and seven against, the rest of the, against the rest of the world, 13-17. and 17. I don't see it. So I don't see you it. You mean the people in, in New York – in the Jets' offices, they only watched their own games. Uh, that's what I, they thought Adam Gaze was, was George Hallis. And by the way, really? I, don't, I don't think that Sam Darnold at the moment, I think he's behind Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson and Baker Mayfield at the people. moment. Behind a lot of people. So, so what's Adam Gaze? You know, this, I wouldn't have again, done this. We, we, we're into the lazy portion this is of the, the one program I would not have done. for NFL hiring, yeah. it seems. Yesterday, Tony Dungy told us it simply isn't financially practical for the Eagles to keep Nick Foles and Carson Wentz. Today... We have our friend Mike Freeman writing in Bleacher Report that Foles figures to be one of the most pursued potential free agents ever. Freeman cites one AFC team executive as telling him so many teams will pursue Foles, it will be a Reggie White-like recruitment. Tony, does this make sense to you, Foles becoming the object of everybody's desire? You know I love Freeman. I know you do. You know I have him on the podcast every week. We both do. And I would just say to him, slow your roll, Sparky. <laughs> you know, I would point out... That in games that Nick Foles has started, other than with Philadelphia, if you want to say Philadelphia, great. Other than with Philadelphia, which would include, I think, the Rams and the Chiefs, he's five and seven with ten touchdowns and ten interceptions. I don't know that that causes a stampede, Mike. I don't know that. I think it should. Now you know, if I'm Philadelphia, and I understand, oh, I'd like to keep him there's a Philly. twenty million dollar situation here for the most part. And Foles, if he leaves, I think would have to wind up. And with a $2 million buyout. Which would be nothing compared to nothing what he would get. get. But, Tony, we just talked about this. We always sit down and we write down all the quarterbacks that we think are legit starting quarterbacks. And one of us will get to 14 and one of us will get to 15. That's then we about stop. It. That's about That it. means half the league yeah. could upgrade by getting Nick Foles. I'm not going to say Reggie White-like. Mike. Because Reggie White is an absolute, well, obviously was a Hall of Fame player like What if this magic no, is just with the Eagles? But you don't even need, okay, but you don't even need magic. How about competence? Nick Foles has demonstrated that last, beyond that. Last year at this time, there was a run on Kirk Cousins. 
And the yeah. Vikings ended up paying an yeah. incredible amount of money for Kirk Cousins. Are they in the playoffs this year? No. They're not because he's a good but quarterback, if there was not a, a great if there quarterback. Was not a stampede if there were people jumping up in the front row to try to get Kirk Cousins. Foles has proven a million times more than Kirk he's Cousins. He's proven it in, in, in a great playoff run okay. and what appears to be another great playoff run. That's two run. more than Kirk Cousins. I, I think he's best off with the Eagles. Me too. But, I but if they can't keep him because of that $20 million price tag, then what? He can spend $20 million on him. Okay. Yesterday, Sean Payton called his team together for a little show and tell. He walked into a meeting room with three armed guards, the Lombardi Trophy, and $225,000 in cash. And Peyton said, quote, you all want this? Win three bleeping games, unquote. Will Bond, are you impressed with Peyton's motivational technique? No. But, I'm, you know, I'm not a football player. I'm not running through the wall. Well, there are certain things I would run through the wall for, but none, none, none of the stuff that football players would. And I guess when you're that age and somebody puts 200 grand in front of you, I mean, I'm trying to think back to when I was 22, 24, 26, 32. It does, it, no, it doesn't impress me. And I got to think that the smarter guys in that locker room, starting with Drew Brees, would just sort of chuckle to themselves because you know what it's not going to help? It's not going to help sack Nick Foles or take him out of his rhythm or put a Philadelphia running back uh, on the ground. It's not going to help any of that stuff on Sunday. None. So what I wanted was the breakdown of the money. Was it in tens? Was it in twenties? Was it in fifties? Was it in hundreds? And because, and you'll remember this, Don King, used to take a yeah, briefcase, satchel, briefcase, a yeah. satchel, and he stuffed it with money, yeah. and he said to somebody, it's $100,000, but it was all in ones. First of all, and it, it was probably a couple of hundred dollars. It was ones. That's we, all it was. <laughs> so I wanted to break down. Now, I think this is, I particularly think this is brilliant. Why? I understand that football players with multi-million dollar contracts, $250,000 is not that big a deal. You made it clear just now it wasn't a big deal to you either. No, 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 no. But, it's not the amount. But when it's you see it, it, when you see that guess, did you see their reactions? They all went, wow, when you see that cash in front of you, because that's the share that each know, player each will player get. Gets. And and even Again, if, and it's just it's, Is it going to help them in the moment? I think so. Really? I do. I think so. And by the way, they're five and zero at home with Breeze and Peyton and in playoff you know what? games. That would they got excite me if I was on that team more. I thought it was brilliant. That cash. I'm just saying I thought it was brilliant. I did. I d- Cheesy I d- is I would word dive in. I think I would I dive think in. Would. It's time for our Kyler Murray update, Tony. Susan Slusser reports in the San Francisco Chronicle that even the Oakland A's, who own Murray's baseball rights, expect the kid to enter the upcoming NFL draft. If Murray then chooses to play football, he'd have to return to the A's, the $4 million signing bonus he received. Tony, using recent NFL drafts, Murray figures to get a signing bonus that's two to three times what the A's gave him. So what do you see happening with Murray? Well, I think it got much more interesting because of our close personal friend, Cliff King. Healthy and available for Houston, then I'll take James Harden. Because I, I know that James Harden is one of the five best players in the league the last five years. But Chris Paul's the most important player on that team, as we saw last year when they were up three. They couldn't close after, after leading that series late. Couldn't hit any three-point shots. It's Chris Paul. Therefore, any. Therefore, yeah. my answer is... Onto the Kumpo. It, it is. Right. Because he can grab you. Tw- Last night's line. I know that reminded you of a player in NBA history. Number six. Tell the audience Number who it six. is. Number six. That Number would be six. William Felton Russell. William Felton Russell. Okay, so. Bill F. Russell so I'm is taking, what I call him. <laughs> I'm taking yeah. him. Yeah. I'm taking the points, the rebounds, yeah. the dominance, the inside defense. Harden doesn't play any defense, even though he's better than he has been. And I know the Greek freak has not proven anything yet, but Harden didn't prove anything in May and June, not much either. Right. So, so I'm taking on to the Kumpo. So I think the Greek freak is a better player, potentially. I, I will say this, and I know you will agree. If you give me 27 and 21 every night, I'm going to get a ring. I'm going to get Because yeah. it's 21 rebounds. Yes. Because that is yes. dominating. Don't tell me he don't shoot threes. He does everything yeah. else on the court. But I'm going to take Harden as well. Because I like a guy with the ball in his hands, and I like scoring. I have fallen in love with scoring. He's going to give me for the rest of this year, and it's only this year we're talking about, not the playoffs. 30 and 10. He's going to give me 35 every night. Yeah. He's that good. He's going to give me 35. Well, we're talking so about playoffs. I'm going to, we're talking about playoffs now. Well, he's, he hasn't he had, done it in the playoffs, he's Tony. He's choked in the playoffs. Okay, so he's choked. Onto the Kumpo has not yet had a chance to prove himself in the hard. playoffs. I'm on the record. I'll take, take hard. Take Let's take a break. Coming up. How will playoff football be different for Patrick Mahomes? We're going to ask Steve Young. We'll also ask him whether the Cowboys are a good match for coaching darling Sean McVay. Can I have Chris 
Paul and Ante the Kumpo. No. Come on now. No. I want that's what I want. Chris Paul should be on the Lakers. Still should be on the Lakers. You know what? Your boy. You're absolutely. That's right. your boy. I love him. That's your boy. Chris Paul should have been a Laker. After this weekend's playoff games, which makes it a great time to bring in my former teammate on the LA Express. Hall of Fame quarterback Steve. You were an old man by then. They called me Gramps. Did they? But okay. Steve, tell him I could play, couldn't I? I could play. <laughs> Sid Gilman told me all the time that you were one of the best. I was. <laughs> all right, this is Patrick Mahomes' first playoff start. Last week, three guys had their first playoff starts. They all lost. What would you tell Mahomes to adjust for this, if anything? I would say nothing. You think about when they started the season in the chart. He came out of the gate and the whole league was not, not jealous, but they were focused on Patrick Mahomes. And every week, including the early in the season, the Monday night game in Denver, it felt like the whole league, including the Denver defense, was laser focused to knock this guy down. And so for 16 weeks, he's taken every big shot you can take, and he's done very well. So to, he's been in a playoff mode because the whole team's fixated on taking him down. Now, there's been some slow starts. There's been some games they didn't score quite enough, but in the end, they've lost when the defense has let people score 33, 40 plus points. I think it's not about Patrick Mahomes. Patrick, keep doing exactly what you're doing. Pressure tested for the playoffs. Defense, show up and make sure you get the job done. Uh, let's go to the Cowboys and the Rams. Everyone is trying to hire the next Sean McVay. He's trying to win his first playoff game. I believe he's 0-1 at this point. Do you like this matchup for him? I, I do at home. He's got to get off the schneid, right? I mean, he's already gotten beat at home once. You don't want to get beat at home twice. You start to get a theme. So the pressure's on him and the rest of the Rams. So I expect them to, you know, answer that call. The real question is Jared Goff. The one thing that we learned this season is Jared Goff capable, if he doesn't get all the help from the defense, he doesn't get help from the running back, is he good enough to go make it happen himself? And I think the answer so far has been, well, when he get isolated, maybe not. And so every defense is now going to try to figure out a way to get to Jared Goff to get isolated to prove it to us that you can be a playoff or even Super Bowl champion. And I think that's what they got to face. That'll be the number one thing you got to see is Jared Goff owning uh, the playoff game. Seems like the biggest story about Chargers Patriots is Phillip Rivers. And I get so angry when people talk about legacy, 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 particularly with Rivers. Does a quarterback, Steve, ever think before a game or during a game, oh, I got to win this one so my resume will look better 40 years from now to some dopes? This legacy thing, I mean, how do you, what do you make of it? <laughs> It, there's something, Michael, I don't want to disappoint you. There's something there. I mean, in law, you know, the, the, the saying goes, possession is nine-tenths of the law. In quarterbacking, perception is nine-tenths of the law. And you know that how you're perceived matters, and you have to live with that. You, even when you're playing, you have to live with it. Well, you haven't done this. You haven't done that. You haven't won on the road. You haven't done the playoff game. You haven't the Super Bowl. It's like it never ends. And so the more that you can, you can talk about it as legacy. I think about it as just knocking down the hurdles to see you can be one of the greats. You want to be one of the greats. You think you've played to be one of the greats. So that's what Phillip's done. If he can do something like win a playoff game in New England, that helps, no question. Not just legacy, but just perception. And it, every day you walk around, you go to the grocery store, the perception matters. People say to you, well, why can't you win this game? Why can't? Trust me, as a quarterback, perception is nine-tenths of the law. Nine-tenths of the law, Tony. That's pretty good, isn't it? Um, on his podcast, Tom Brady says he loves football because there he can show his full range of emotions, which he cannot do in polite society. Does this resonate with you at all? It does. I mean, people ask me, what do you miss about football? And I think it's that football and playing quarterback in the NFL and to be good at it or even great at it, it took every inch of you. It took every inch of your physical emotional, even spiritual, mental capacity. Every inch of it was tested. And you can't, there's nothing else in life that's like that, nothing. And so when, when Tom talks about being able to just be himself, it's the full measure of who you are. Not just being able to scream at people and yell and run around and, you know, and do crazy dances. It really is that it takes the full measure of you that you can't find anywhere else in life. And that's why it's so hard to leave. And then when you're one of the great quarterbacks like Tom Brady, that's what it's gonna be super hard to leave because it's taken every inch of them the whole way. Yeah, because, you know, he loves to yell at offensive coordinators. He can't yell at the waiter. It's not going to work. We'll get you out of here on this. Eagles and Saints. The Saints blew the Eagles out in November. I mean, they got over 40, I think. If you were in Drew Brees' position, how much confidence would that game give you? 
a lot of confidence because I don't know what's necessarily going to change. Yes, the, the Eagles are better than they were then. I think that was the game that kind of spurred them and kind of woke I don't know, woke them up, but just pushed them into a corner that they had to fight their way out of. And you, you, how can you not be impressed with what they've done? But winning that game, what's the new news for the Eagles? Yes, I think a, a better secondary, but unless he runs into something like he did in Dallas, where four guys can rush Drew Brees for the whole game and just get into his kitchen constantly. In that game, it got so prevalent, prevalent that in the, uh, in the overtime, you could saw Drew through that last interception because he got tired of them being right in his chin. If they can do that with four guys in the Philadelphia Phillies, I mean, if the Eagles can do that, then Drew's got a problem. But short of that, he has no problem. Thanks, Steve. We Thank missed you, you last much, week. Thanks appreciate for coming it. back. Happy New Year. Yeah, great. You too. Thanks for the Phillies comment. I don't know where'd that come from. I was just looking around for that. <laughs> ah, one Philly team is. Let's take one last it. break. Still to come, is it smart for the Chargers to sign a second kicker for Sunday's game? Would you ask me that, having a second kicker last week? No, you would like that. Kicker? Yeah, you would like that. And are the Celtics suddenly the best team in the East? I'd like to have that Robbie Gold guy, because, see, he was there. No, yeah. And I if know. he was wearing a uh, Canada Goose coat You'd have put him and out some there. rogue game. And the interruption is brought to you by Domino's. Order online and track your order. Happy time, people. Happy 70th birthday, George Foreman. Wow. Foreman went through three iterations as an athlete. He was beloved when he carried a small American flag around the ring in the 1968 Olympics. He was disliked in his early pro career for being standoffish and a bully. People hated and the him. Anti Ali. They hated him. And then beloved again when, as an old man, he regained the championship and seemed so approachable. Plus, he made hundreds of millions of dollars on an indoor grill, whatever that is. You know what the estimated figure is what he earned, including rights fees and no, likenesses and sales? Nearly two hundred million dollars. Fantastic! How about that, off Good a grill. Him. Good for him. Why didn't you think about that? You're a grill master. Happy anniversary, Bud Grant. On this day three years ago, the then 88-year-old former Vikings coach went out for the ceremonial coin toss in a golf shirt, despite the game time temperature registering a cool minus nine degrees. <laughs> and this is why Bud Grant is heroic. This he is, is why when he holds his next yard sale, Will Bond and I are going. Bud Grant, Lou Grant, and Prince. Isn't that the order in Minnesota? Yes. You think? Yes. I, I would say so. Happy trails to a win for Creighton. Creighton had the ball under its own basket with .8 seconds to go in a three-point lead. They attempted the long bomb inbounds, but it went too far, so the ball is brought you know back. what happens. Marquette inbounded, and <laughs> Sam Hauser threw up a prayer from about 28 it's feet, such a which went shot. down. Though he might not have actually beaten the clock. Yeah. In the overtime, Marquette pulled away. And the sub-headline to the game was that Marcus Howard set an all-time Big East record for single-game points with 53. Wilbon, are you familiar with Mr. Howard? Yes, and he's not the subhead. He is must-watch TV for college basketball almost as much as Zion Williamson. And I mean that. You watch him all the time. All as much as I can. 25 great Big East players in history didn't get this. 40 great ones never got this much. Let's go to the big finish. Let's do it. Rams running back Todd Gurley is off the injury report. Good to go for Saturday's game versus the Cowboys. That's a big deal. Yeah, because the Rams have zero chance without Todd Gurley. Should be a real game, but they got to have him. The Chargers are adding a second kicker just for kickoffs for Sunday's game against the Patriots. Good strategy. They want only touchbacks. They don't want big Patterson back. Touching the ball at all, and their incumbent kicker isn't getting it that deep. Kevin Durant not among the starters in the latest All-Star Game fan voting. You surprised, right? Well, LeBron and Luka Doncic seem to be getting all the votes at forward. No KD? Well, he's got to get votes. The Brewers signed Yasmani Grandal to a one-year $18 million deal. Your thoughts? They're going for it again. They're not a small market team anymore. They are going for it. Last one, the Celtics crush the Pacers. They have the heat tonight. They're the best team in the East, right? Not yet. I think they will be. But Toronto and Milwaukee have to be reckoned with, Tony. So does Philly. We're out of time. We will try and do better the same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the PTI podcast on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. Ben Huff, Golf Pride. Thank you very much. Golf. Grips, baby. Day. My Rips. God. PTI.